and when you're ready. Hey Tom, it's Bruce Miller, Hennessy Airstream and RV here in Columbus, Ohio, standing right beside your beautiful new Silver Shadow Limited Edition. It's really pretty with the nice wood grain, the wide white, white walls, the, the baby moons and the trim rings. It's a beautiful little rig. So let's take a walk around here and we'll talk about everything on this. Since you're not going to be able to come up and pick it up yourself, I want to go over this so you know how everything works. Uh, first off, let's start with the door. You're going to get two sets of keys. This is a latch key and this is a deadbolt key. So uh, they're the same key, but that, those are the locks. So when you want inside, you want to do the deadbolt. It's that red lever right there. Just pops the deadbolt out so you can secure yourself inside. This door, I want you to be very careful of. It snaps back here open. What I don't want you to do is push on the top or pull on the top. I don't want you to spring your door. So when you're latching it open, press down here when you're pulling it to close it. Pull down here, that way you don't spring your door. And don't be bashful with this door. Shut it firmly. If you do not, this will not latch. You won't be able to lock it properly. We'll go on around the outside here and then we'll move to the inside. Up front here, We've got your Group 24 Deep Cycle battery. It does have the solar plug right here on the side. So if you decide to get solar panels some days, someday they're plug and play, they simply plug in and, and take care of everything. This little red knob right underneath here is your battery cutoff switch. Just reach under here and flip it. And red is off, green is on. That is the same as taking the cover off of this and removing the positive side of the cable. So when you're storing it for a period of time, you want to disconnect that so that your battery doesn't get drained just by the, the wiring harness and things like that. When you're towing, you always want it on because if it's on, it will charge the battery. Remember, if it's turned off, it's just like taking the positive lead off this battery, your battery will not charge. One thing I want to point out uh, about the hitch here, and normally uh, if you were here, we'd be helping you hitch up and you'd see all of this. But I want you to, uh, to realize when you latch this down on the ball, it will not pull up until you pull this little trigger right here underneath. And then it'll pop right up. So the tongue weight on this is pretty low. We're talking about, I don't know, 150 pounds of the jacks are down in the back, so I can't lift it up. But it's easy to lift up, easy to maneuver, pull, move around. So basically when you hitch up with this, the beauty of one of these small rigs is you can just get close and then pull it up where you want it, lift it up, put it on, or use the jack if you prefer. Uh, moving on around, we've got another door over here just like the one on the other side. Same, same rules apply. Porch light switches right inside the door here. These we call them affectionately cowbells. There's one on each side. This is a vent for the back side of the air conditioner. So this is where the air exhausts. There's an intake underneath. So your air conditioner inside here looks much like, and is in fact, what we uh, call a window rattler. But since the back is enclosed, unlike it would be if it was in the window of a home, uh, it has to have vents out the back. That's what these are for. This is your water connection. And like I said, you've got two sets of keys. I'm using a master here. So I'll get this open and show you. This is where you fill your water tank. You've got an 11 gallon water tank here. Just fill it with a hose. When it's full, you'll know it because it'll start spitting water back at you. This other connection in here is for city water. So if you're in a camp campground that offers full hookups, you can hook a water hose up here and you'll have an endless supply of water. Uh, this bypasses the water tank and the water pump. One thing you want to be very careful of is maximum 50 PSI. The thing, uh, a lot of campgrounds, especially if there's not a lot of people in there, might have 70, 80 pounds of pressure in their water system. If you hook up to something over 50 PSI, it will blow your water lines. So make sure you always use a water pressure regulator. And it's in a packet, it comes with it, that, uh, that I'm gonna send to you. Always put that water pressure regulator on the spigot end of your hose. So you don't have it pulling down here and weighting this down. And just leave it on your hose. That way you don't forget to use it. Play it safe. Close that up. This is where your shore power hooks up. And I'll show you your cord inside. It is polarized. There's a little L shape right here. So it will only go on one way. You're going to...
put it in there, and you're going to turn it about a quarter of an inch clockwise to lock it in place. There's also a screw-on locking ring that if you're there very long, you want to, uh, you can make it a, a little more uh, uh, firmly attached. I don't do that for short term. If I'm going to be there a few days, I'll do that. Uh, but just quarter of a turn and a latch on. To get it off, you have to turn it a quarter, not quarter of a turn, I'm sorry, quarter of an inch. You have to turn it about a quarter of an inch counterclockwise, and then you can pull it back off. And I'll show you that cord where it's stored inside. Your jacks here are just jacks that drop down, and then they swing up. And let's see, I think this is Tom. <laughs> Tom, I'm going to call you back in a minute. Uh, these jacks, just slide them up, swing them up. To get them down, pull them toward the inside, swing them down, and drop them down. That's all there is to it. Uh, what I like to do is drop them down uh, and then crank the top front up just a little bit to put uh, just a little bit of pressure on those jacks. That makes it nice and stable when you're, uh, when you're inside, you know, tossing and turning at night, that kind of thing. Moving on around here to your, uh, your outdoor kitchen. I got it kind of close to that pole, but we cleared it. You've got another uh, one key on your ring that goes to these latches. And these latches that have a lock that's kind of tucked away here right under this little rubber cover. Turn it half, a half turn and you'll be able to lock that in place. We're going to have, like I told you, a temporary tag on this for you to, uh, for your driver to get it home. Here's your kitchen. You've got a little uh, storage area here for utensils, that kind of thing. You got some storage underneath. You can see the back side of the uh, water tank there. It's 11 gallons. That you wouldn't think it was. I won't charge you any extra for the leaf. Um, it's long and flat, but you've also got some nice storage there. And here's the switch for your water pump right here. Turn the pump on, and you've got water. It's a demand pump. It will only run when uh, when pressure drops. Now, one thing you want to do. Uh, before it gets really cold is you want to winterize this and it's real easy to do just uh, If you have any questions about it, give me a shout. It's, it's like a 10 minute little project. So um, Your cooktop here This pops off so you can clean it make note if you ever pop it off It's just held in by these little rubber grommets here That it does have a right way and a wrong way to go back on if you put it on the wrong way It'll be cockeyed these little legs right here are longer than these little legs right here. So just kind of keep track of that. To light this, uh, first off, you're gonna put a little green propane tank right here, one of those little one pounders, it screws right on. And then you're gonna turn this knob here to the light position. You're gonna hold it in to override the thermocouple and light the burner. Hold it in for a couple of seconds longer, let that thermocouple heat up. Once it does, you can release this and adjust the height of your flame. When you're done, just turn it off. That's all there is to it. You've got outdoor speakers here. We've got a light here. Nice and bright. You've got a USB charging center, 12 volt charging center. This is the uh, one of the two uh, iPod mounts, iPad mounts, I'm sorry. And here is a 110 outlet that is a ground fault outlet. Make note that every 110 outlet in this unit runs through this ground fault. So if you have, if you're plugged in and things are working except that your 110 outlets aren't working, come back here and check this, it's probably tripped. Uh, there's another place, uh, a couple of things to check inside as well. Here's your refrigerator. This is a really cool little rig. You're going to lift up on this to slide it out. <coughs> on off switch is right down here. And it does run on battery. Of course, when you're plugged in, it'll be running on 110. But realize if you're running this on battery alone and you're not connected to your vehicle going down the road, it will chew up your battery from a full charge to dead flat in about six to seven hours. So that's not the ideal way to run it. It's meant to run that way while you're driving because your car will be charging this battery as you drive. Uh, but when you where you're, when you get where you're going, it's meant to be plugged in. Uh, the on-off switch, like it says down there, here's your temperature controls and everything right here. <laughs> and there's a manual in here for it as well. And I've got manuals for you and a lot of things I'm going to show you here. Uh, when you shut this, just press down firmly to latch it. Lift up, slide it back in until it latches. 
that's pretty much all there is to the kitchen. Pretty cool. We'll close this. And we'll walk on around the other side here. Again, we've got the other cowbell. And I'm going to put this 30 amp to 15 amp adapter we talked about in here. I know you talked to Todd about this. I'm going to have it in here for you. Here's a packet of all kinds of manuals and so on that go with the unit. And here's two sets of keys on here. So that's all going to be in there for you. And Todd said he's having the spare tire shipped directly to you. So you should see that at home in a few days. Now, I'll tell you what, I'm going to let uh, Chris come over here and kind of aim in this side. And I'm going to go to the other door so I can show you how things work inside. First, let's look underneath here. You got storage underneath the bed here on both sides. Okay, now I'll pull this back over and head to the other side. We've got storage under this side as well, and I'm just double checking your power cord is right here, right underneath. By the way, when you look at that adapter, once in a while, I send those adapters to folks and they'll say, well, you send me the wrong adapter, it doesn't fit the trailer. And you know what? They're right. The adapter doesn't go on the trailer. It goes on the other end of the power cord. Here we've got blinds on both sides. We've got blinds over here on the stargazer window. Up here I've got a light switch, which is for the porch light outside. I've got a ceiling light switch right here and another porch light light switch over there. I've got a carbon monoxide detector and a smoke detector. Over here, another USB and 12 volt charging station, another 110 outlet. Now this is your power converter. This is the, the unit that when you're plugged into 110, distributes power to everything that requires 110 like the outlets and the air conditioner and it also steps 110 down to 12 volt and powers everything that requires 12 volt. You've got three breakers in there, you've got four fuses, those are just automotive 12 volt fuses but if you have any 110 issues uh, and that ground fault outlet out there doesn't solve it you probably got a breaker in here tripped so check that. To open it you just Pull it open and snap it shut. That's all there is to it. Little storage here. Another charging station. Another iPad uh, mount. Air conditioner unit is pretty self-explanatory. It's like any other window rattle or ever built. Temperature and fan settings. One thing that's different about it, actually two things. Right over here, there's an outlet with a big white plug in it. That is actually the plug to the air conditioner, and they've left it exposed because it has a reset button on it. Right next to that outlet is another switch. That switch is a fan. Because of the way this is installed, that fan is a, an assist so that this unit can circulate the air behind it and out those cowbells. So when you're running this, turn that fan on. When you're done running this, turn the fan off. The fan does run on 110, or excuse me, 12 volt, <coughs> and you'll hear it run. So when you turn this off, and what's that fan? That's it right there. Just rem remember to turn it off so you don't kill your batteries. Over there is your sound system. It does have Bluetooth. Really nice sound system. I'll leave leave you to that in the manual. It's pretty it's pretty standard fare. Uh, up here, we've got the fantastic roof vent fan. Uh, to open it, we crank it open. Now, if it doesn't want to go, don't force it because there's a latch. If you force it when it's latched, you'll break it. So we're just going to crank it up. And I think I latched it instead of unlatching it. Hang on a sec. There we go. I got it. <laughs> just crank it up. This way is exhaust. The other way is in. There's three speeds and off. The exhaust is much more efficient than drawing it in. Uh, you have these windows open. This thing is rated at about 700 cubic feet of air per minute. 
So if you have these windows on the doors open, uh, that moves a lot of air. You'll stay nice and cool. On those nights that it's just not quite warm enough for the air conditioner, that does an awesome job. By the way, Tom, this is a four glass, a four amp glass fuse. Just take that cap off, and there's a glass fuse in there. If I crank it shut while it's on, it will shut itself off. There you go. You can see it's off. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off, and then I'm going to latch it again. That's all there is to the fan. You've got nice speakers in the ceiling. You've got storage up front here in the headboard. Nice little basket they ship with it. You got drink holders on both sides. Nice rig, guys. I hope you have a lot of fun with it. Um, I think we've covered everything except one thing I just realized I hadn't talked about, and that's the windows and the door. So let me walk around there. I talked about the windows being open, the fan being on, and I realized, wait a minute, I didn't talk about the windows themselves. So there's two little buttons right here. <coughs> You slide them in and lift it up, and you can latch it up. So now you can see your windows open. I can uh, I can lower it. There's another position right there, so I've just got it cracked. Or all the way down, and if you do close it, make sure that it's all the way down and in the groove. Guys, that's all there is to it. I hope you get years and years of enjoyment out of it. If you have any questions, you know where to get, reach me. Just call me on my cell, 937-725-2433. You can always call Hadesy Direct at 614-279-8880 or email me at bruce at Thanks, Tom.